Hi guys, it's Angie with Fun Endeavors Tie-Dye Lab. Today I'm going to make a couple of gravity and wick lightning dies. I think that the gravity dies are cool and I think that the wick dies are cool, so I decided to combine them together on these two shirts. I'm starting by using a washable marker and drawing a lightning type design across the shirt. I'm going diagonally from one shoulder to the opposite hem of the shirt. Now I'm going to fan fold this line and I'm going to tie it with some sinew. I'm using sinew because it's wax coated and so whenever I tie this line with sinew and I pull it really tight, it's going to give a definition line. This fold is going to be pretty wide and so I can't guarantee I'm going to get a white line where I tie the sinew line, but it will give a definition line. So it'll look different than the rest of the shirt. On smaller lines, whenever I tie them with sinew and I pull them really tightly, the wax coating kind of seals the sinew where it won't allow any of the dye underneath that area. But like I said, because this line is so wide, it's going to be kind of tough for me to be able to get that line perfect where none of the dye gets underneath there. I'm going to wrap the sinew around the shirt and I'm going to place my hand on top of this fold and I'm going to press down as I'm pulling the sinew tight. That's going to help to keep my folds flat and not buckle. What happens when you have a line that's as long as this one is the minute I start to pull on that sinew, it immediately is going to buckle all of those folds that I just made in the shirt and either cause like a gap down underneath the sinew on the bottom part or cause a gap on the top or just cause everything to kind of fold in on itself almost like you would a taco. If I wanted to have a really tight sinew line, I would just go with that fold and I would pull it really tight and let it kind of fold or taco in on itself because I would probably get a really good white line that way. Like I said, I don't mind if some of the dye gets underneath. I just want some kind of a definition line for this lightning bolt. I'm going to fold and tie the second shirt the same exact way. After I tied both of these shirts, I went ahead and tied a few more, so by the time I got around to applying the dye to them, they were completely dry. They don't have to be though, you can go ahead and dye them when they're still damp. For the first shirt, I've chosen three Happy Cat tie-dye colors. And my setup is I have my metal shelving rack outside underneath the trees, and on each end of my shelving rack, I've placed two of the Dollar Tree dish pans and then on top of the Dollar Tree dish pans, I've placed a long piece of vinyl guttering. I want to try to keep these shirts a little bit further out of the muck than I have when I've done some of the designs that were wick dyes because I'm in a gravity dye by putting a color on top. So I don't want those colors to meet too quickly. I'm also going to use my respirator even though I'm outside. Anytime I mess with dye, I always wear a respirator because I don't want to inhale any of that dye powder. Then I'm going to add ice to each one of the containers. I want just enough ice to cover up the shirt. Since I don't have as much of the shirt down inside of the container, I don't need to use quite as much ice as I do when I wick dye. For reference, this shirt is a size large. The other shirt that I'm going to do the same technique with is a size extra large. Okay, so over the top of the ice in this first container, I'm going to use Strawberry Skies. Like I said, all three of these dye colors are Happy Cat tie-dye colors. 
I have a link down below in the description for this video to Happy Cat Tie Dye's website. Amanda is the owner of Happy Cat Tie Dye and she mixes all of her colors so that they are great color splitting colors. I don't own all the colors that she sells, but the ones that I do are gorgeous. Strawberry Skies especially has some beautiful color splits. The Strawberry Skies is going to go on the top portion of the shirt. On the lower corner of the shirt, I'm using Noble Purple. And I'm not adding a whole lot of dye to these containers because, like I said, I don't have a whole lot of the shirt down inside of these containers. So that was the wick dye portion of this shirt. The intended purpose is for the ice to melt and the dye to get wicked up through the shirt. Now I'm gonna do the gravity dyed portion of the shirt and I'm gonna add ice storm right over the top of the sinew line. The purpose of this is for the dye to get pulled down through the rest of the shirt. I have several other like wick dyed shirts out on my YouTube page and I have several gravity dyed shirts out there. So if you'd like to see either one of these techniques by themselves, I have videos for both techniques. Now I'm gonna sprinkle a little bit of additional soda ash over the top of all the dye and add a couple pretty large ice cubes on top of the gravity dyed portion. I've included a couple of photos from each angle so that you can see what the shirt looked like with the ice on top. For the second shirt, I decided to use a little bit darker color palette. So I am gonna use a couple of Pro Chemical colors and a Dharma Trading Company color. I have the same setup on the other end of my metal shelving unit. This is a really long piece of guttering, so I'm using the same piece of guttering for both of the shirts. I have a few photos after I dye this one, which will kind of show you my setup a little bit better. I placed the shirt with the sinew line in the middle of the guttering and I'm adding ice to each of the containers again. This shirt is a little bit larger so I'm going to add just a little bit more ice because I have a little bit of extra fabric hanging over into each container. I'm starting by adding Dances with Raisins from Dharma in one container and I'm adding Stormy Sky from Pro Chemical and Dye in the other. Then on my sinew line for the gravity dye portion, I'm going to use Spicy Plum from Pro Chemical and Dye. I'm sprinkling a little bit of additional soda ash over the top as well, and then going to add the ice onto the gravity dye portion. I've added photos of what this one looks like from both angles as well. Then I've included some photos of my entire setup and what the shirts looked like as the ice melted and they continued to process. I left them outside for about two days to allow all the ice to melt and allow them to process. After all the ice melted, I came back and added a couple more ice cubes to the top of the gravity dye portion on both of the shirts. And about twice a day, I would come out and spray them with some soda ash solution that I had inside of a spray bottle to make sure they didn't dry out. To make it easier on myself, I've been referring to these shirts as the blue shirt and the red shirt. The blue shirt is the very first one that I applied the dye to, and the red shirt is the second one that I applied the dye to. I started by rinsing the blue shirt first, and I took both of the containers into my utility sink, dumped out the muck, which all muck is, is the runoff from the melting ice and dye, and then I started rinsing the shirt in cold water to rinse out the soda ash. I find all kinds of extra little tidbits of things inside of my containers once I've ice dyed underneath the trees. The squirrels and the birds like to knock all kinds of stuff off into the containers. After rinsing in cold water for a while, I untie the shirt and then I warm the water up to hot and continue rinsing in hot water to rinse out the excess dye that didn't bond with the fabric. Instead of continuing to rinse for a long time, I'm going to go ahead and run some really hot water in the other side of my utility sink, put a little bit of Blue Dawn dish detergent in the water, and just put this shirt in and allow it to soak. When the water cools off, I'll change it out, and I'll continue that soaking process until the water is remaining almost clear. Then I'm going to put the shirt along with some Dharma's Professional Textile Detergent into my washing machine 
and wash it using a hot water cycle. I'm going to rinse the red shirt the same exact way that I did the blue one. And once the water is remaining almost clear after the soaking process, I'll go ahead and put them both in the washing machine at the same time. The shirts have both been washed and dried, and let's see how they turned out. Here's the first shirt, the one that I'm referring to as the blue shirt, and I think it looks really cool. Remember the strawberry skies is up on the shoulder or the sleeve of the shirt, and the noble purple is what's down in the corner of the shirt. The ice storm is the lightning bolt part. Okay, let's take a look at the red one, and then we'll compare both of them. On this one, the Dances with Raisins is in the lower corner. The Stormy Skies is on the shoulder and the sleeve. And the Spicy Plum is the lightning bolt part. Okay, so now let's look at both of them side by side. First off, I really like this technique. I like the wick dies and I like the gravity dies. So putting them together, I thought would be kind of fun and interesting. I don't see as much wicking from the dye as I do when I just do a straight wick dye. And I pretty much know the reason for that. In general, the dye likes to go where it's dry. And since I was doing a gravity dye at the same time, the fabric was not totally dry. If I had not been doing the gravity dye where the dye was moving down and that area was damp, then I think I would have had more wicking where the dye traveled a little further up the shirt. There's almost a very definite line where the dye or the shirt was down inside of the containers. That to me is a little bit interesting. I would have thought that it would have gradually faded into the gravity dye portion, not been such a definite line. I do like the colors on both of the shirts. I think that the strawberry skies on the blue shirt ended up being pretty dark. Most of the time I get a little bit lighter feel from that color. I didn't add a whole lot of it over the top of the ice, but I don't know why. For some reason, I think it got a little concentrated. Same thing with the noble purple. I didn't get a lot of color splits out of the noble purple, but I do really like the shirt. And of course the ice storm is just a really pretty blue. I like that too. On the other shirt, I absolutely love the spicy plum. That color never disappoints with all the cool color splits and everything. The other two colors on this shirt are pretty too, but they're not as pretty as the spicy plum. I mean, the way that color is splitting out with the green and everything, I just, it's really the standout on the shirt. So even though I like this technique and I thought it was fun to try, I think I actually prefer the shirts when I do them separately, when either I do a wick dye to allow it to travel up closer to the line, or whenever I just do a gravity dye and allow it to travel further down the shirt. Maybe if I use some lighter colors for the wick dye, the transition between the wick and the gravity dye wouldn't be quite as severe. Or it might have worked a little bit better too if the shirts were still damp. That's a possibility as well. I don't know. So what do you guys think about them? Do you like these two techniques combined together? Or are you kind of like me where you like each of them individually, but not necessarily your favorite to put them together? Please drop me some comments down below and let me know. And what about that spicy plum? It's an absolutely gorgeous color, isn't it? How the green splits out of it and it almost fills in that sinew line. I just think that's really cool. So if you guys have enjoyed watching the video and watching me kind of experiment with this technique a little bit or putting the techniques together, I sure would appreciate it if you would like the video and if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'll hit the bell, you'll receive a notification whenever I upload a new video. Thank you all for watching and I hope you have a great day.